Good afternoon. Thanks for joining us across the fence. I'm Fran Stoddard. One of the highest honors in Vermont dairy farming is being awarded to a family in Enosburg Falls. The McGarry Dairy is the winner of the 2021 Vermont Dairy Farm of the Year. The award is given each year by the Green Pastures Program, which honors one dairy from each of the six New England states. We'll meet the McGarry family in just a moment. To begin, here's Vermont Secretary of Agriculture, Food and Markets. Congratulations to the McGarry family the Farmer of the Year from the Green Mountain State. You've worked hard over the last few years on your land, taking care of your animals, and producing a wonderful dairy product for all of us. We congratulate you on all you've done for your community in Franklin County and Vermont. We also congratulate the other winners of the pasture program throughout New England for their work throughout the years, raising agriculture to a new level. Best of luck throughout the seasons, producing wonderful milk for Vermont and the region and the country. We appreciate your hard work and dedication that you've all done over the last few years. Congratulations, the Farmers of the Year. I'm Keith Silva, and this is McGarry Dairy in Enosburg Falls. The origin story of this farm begins as a University of Vermont Extension love story. Diane Cotalesa and Ed McGarry met when they worked for Extension in the 1980s. Me and Diane married in 87, and uh, in 89, we uh, rented a farm. After about four years, we felt we were in a position we could afford to buy a place, so we looked all over New York State and Vermont, and then this farm three miles up the road came up for sale. We ended up buying this one in 93, I was working full time and up until we started milking cows, Ed was working full time. So we were pretty busy and we knew where we wanted to go and we had goals, but I mean, we were just so busy that we just kind of buckled down and did it. The McGarry's have built their business through planning, perseverance, and prudence. If you look around here, we aren't elaborate. If you see our parlor, I always laugh that uh, when we're done with it, I think the Smithsonian's going to want it because it's so old. Museum piece or not, the family milks 115 cows in this parlor. That's small when compared to the average milking herd in Vermont, which numbers around 200 cows. The McGarry's are members of the Cabot Cooperative Creamery. But it's so nice to have Diane and Ed person. help out when needed, but it's Brian, the couple's youngest child, who runs the operation and is a partner in the farm business. He graduated a few years ago from Virginia Tech with a degree in dairy science. Brian has always wanted a farm. When people would come here, like relatives from the city, uh, my, my sister-in-laws and all would be like, God, Brian told me all about the farm. It was always a dream of mine. And as I've gotten older, I've gotten really into the, you know, number side of things too. Uh, how, how do we, how does day-to-day -day work? improve our numbers, improve our profitability, which also leads back to health of our cows. Healthy cows, and the milk they make, comes from high quality crops. The McGarry's cropping strategy has been to invest in land, not in equipment. The way it was done back in the uh, early 90s was most people had their own equipment and did their own cropping. Diane and I, whenever we penciled it out, even to buy a mower or something, we would just say, wow, that's a, huge expense for a piece of equipment we're going to use little, literally for seven, eight days out of the year, you know? And so we could never, felt we could never justify that sort of expense. Custom cropping allows the McGarry's to hire out all their needs when it comes to the manpower and machinery needed to plant, fertilize, and harvest. They work with Scott Magnin's custom service in St. Albans to manage the farm's 200 acres. The cropping has a lot of perks. It allows it frees us up to milk more cows more efficiently, so it keeps us busier year round. It also gets a more uniform feed. We're doing a cutting in a day, so the feed is the exact same throughout our bunk. So our cows have really even feed throughout the year. Hiring in a custom operator doesn't mean the McGarry's take a hands-off approach to managing their cropland. Quite the opposite. Working this way allows them to take advantage of the latest technology, like manure injection, and cutting-edge cropping strategies like no-till planting, cover cropping, and interseeding. All of which benefits the McGarry's, sure, but it's also about protecting natural resources. 
I take very seriously uh, the term steward of the land and steward of the animals. I guess we try and be considerate neighbors. It means being a good neighbor to everyone, you know, the worldwide, if you can believe it. Soil health is so important. Like, to me, your land is, is such a limited resource, you've got to take care of your land. Um, and anything you do to, to destroy your land, that takes years and years to, to recoup. You've just got to take care of what you've got. And it pays on so many levels. Having better soil health, better crops, better feed for your cows. It's just such a win-win-win in so many levels. It actually uh, is more profitable. We've seen yield increases with less inputs. Um, we aren't using as many synthetic fertilizers, which take a lot of fossil fuels to produce. In fact, we have cut down on our synthetic fertilizers by about, mm, I would guess, eight tons a year. And we're using more of our nutrients that we have here and keeping them here without, you know, we aren't losing them to the air or worse water. The sod will cover the seed properly. Jeff Sanders is an agronomy specialist with UVM Extension. He works with the McGarry's and their custom operator to come up with a plan that is financially sound and environmentally conscious. The McGarry's have always been on board with being environmentally friendly farmers. To be doing it the right way and know you're doing it the right way uh, has a lot of value for the farming community and it also has a lot of value for the, the rest of the population at large. And, and it's important from a UVM perspective because uh, this is where we see the things that we teach and the things that we educate people uh, about hit, hit the ground. And th this is where it matters. It matters here. This is a beautiful no-till field of corn. It's been a long road. We figured a lot of stuff out over the last 10 years and now this is normal. 10 years ago, this was not normal. But as things evolve, and get better, uh, we get better results. And they've been in it from the beginning, so uh, this is what we expect. It's not, we aren't amazed at this, this is what we expect. A reporter once asked a farmer if he had been farming all his life. The farmer smiled at the reporter and said, well, not all my life. According to the nonprofit American Farmland Trust, the average age of a Vermont dairy farmer is 57. Ed and Diane haven't farmed all their lives, but they've never stopped thinking about the future of their farm. Me and my wife have always felt we wanted to enjoy retirement. We've worked hard, we wanted to enjoy, so we've always tried to invest in retirement. And so when my son was pretty certain he wanted the farm, we were pretty set up for it as far as retirement. It was just a matter of going to the lawyers and getting it formalized. We hired a team of lawyers that each had their specialty but they worked together. I don't want to say that we did this thing three years ago and now it's done. It's always evolving as things change, as Brian's been here longer, we'll probably tweak it and redo it some. I think the thing that makes transition most successful is interest in that incoming generation. Tony Kitsis works with the UVM Extension's Farm Viability Team to advise farmers during their farm transition. He also chairs the committee that selects the Vermont Dairy Farm of the Year. The judges really like to see, is there enough family involvement to keep things going, moving forward? And if so, what is that next generation looking to do? To have the ability to take where the farm is now and say to themselves, I have a great opportunity with what I've just learned take my family farm the next step forward. Brian has that desire. I think it's exciting because, uh, you know, it gives me an opportunity to continue something that we've grown up with and hopefully continue to excel at. My parents did a, excelled when they dairy farmed and I, hopefully I can continue that and do a good job moving forward. Continue to make changes like my parents did in the past that will keep this farm going for years to come. Makes me nervous because the dairy industry is tough, but you know I'm excited to take that challenge on too. Dairy farming is a discipline, a constant rhythm of chores, crops, and cows. This award is a reason for the McGarry's to celebrate. It's also a reminder the work goes on. 
because that's dairy farming. I'll tell you, I read, I don't know how long ago, 20 years ago, that by 2050 there would only be, I think, no more than 50 farms in Vermont, and I thought it was crazy. But I'm beginning to believe that, and I'm hoping Brian can be one of those 50 farms, if that's what it comes down to. I remember thinking back to uh, when, when me and Diane first started, and uh, all the hard work. I guess it's just nice to be recognized for years of hard work and trying to do the right thing, you know. And what does it mean to be a dairy farm today? Oh, that's a difficult, difficult question. I don't know how to quite answer that. I mean, uh, I feel like I wear so many hats. One minute I'm helping Brian with the nutrient management plan, the next minute I'm milking, then I'm doing taxes. You have to be very flexible and adaptable and just change very quickly and, and, and listen to people, listen to the people around you. You got to bring your A game almost every day, and that can be a challenge. You walk in today, you might do things different tomorrow. You might decide there's a better way based on research you find or whatever. Always try and stay on the cutting edge of the research. I, I'm honored, but I'm also, uh, I think there's a lot of room for improvement still. What began as an extension love story became a commitment to farming and continuing the family business. That's the McGarry family, the 2021 Vermont Dairy Farm of the Year. In Enosburg Falls, I'm Keith Silva with Across the Fence. We'll have more from Keith's interview with the McGarrys on our social media. Follow us on Facebook or Twitter to learn how you can visit the McGarrys and stay in a 19th century farmhouse run by the family. It's never too early to nominate a family for next year's award. One can put forward a nomination for the Dairy Farm of the Year. You can download a nomination form at the website on your screen. Once again, our congratulations to the McGarry family of Enosburg Falls for earning the 2021 Vermont Dairy Farm of the Year Award. Thank you for joining us across the fence. I'm Fran Stoddard. Stay well.